Okay, so this video is going to be about the, the some of the notation that's used in the epsilon delta uh, definition of a limit. So we're not actually going to be looking at, at the definition, but we're just going to be looking at some of the notation that gets used. So this is kind of like a, a precursor to the next video, which is which is actually talking about the definition. Okay. Also, this is a remake just because this is a remake of the, the of a video just because the videos were so popular and I thought I could make it a little bit quicker. Anyways, you don't care about any of that. Let's just get started. Okay. So we've seen this limit before, the limit as x approaches 3, and we also we know that this is equal to 6. Just we know that because we've seen it before. So I'm just going to write a 6 up here. Okay, and according to our understanding of a limit, we know that x is going to squeeze in on 3. Well, if that's really the case, then why don't we force x to be in some interval, you know, relatively close to 3. So maybe x has to be between 2 and 4. You know, we'll keep x close to 3. You know, if we're squeezing in on it, we don't want x to be way out here coming in, is what I'm trying to get at. Okay, and when we do that, we can rewrite this now as 3, and then 4 is really 3 plus 1, and 2 is really 3 minus 1. Now, why would we go to the trouble of rewriting it this way? Well, this shows us that, you know, we could, we, the interval that we have is that we, if we start at 3, we could either go 1 to the right or 1 to the left. And that means that our interval is centered around 3. And that's a little bit more descriptive than just writing 2 and 4 because, you know, our, it's the limit as x approaches 3. So to write it in a way that makes it clear that we're centered around 3, you know, it seems to make sense for us. Okay, so we want x to be in this interval. So let me scroll down here for a minute. How could we force x to be between, you know, 2 and 4? Well, we, we just write it just like I said, you know, this is something you've been doing for a while now. If we want x to be two, between 2 and 4, we say it's greater than 2. So x is greater than 2 and it's less than 4. That forces it to be in that interval, right? A way that we could view this is if it's greater than 2, it's all these values. And if it's less than 4, let me scroll up for just a minute. If it's less than 4, then it's all these values. But it has to be both at the same time, so it's only what's in between. So it could be any, any, in that, it's anywhere in that interval between 2 and 4. Okay, so you got that. And now let's just rewrite this like we, like we had talked about. So it's x is less than 3 minus 1, which is less than 3 plus 1. And now, just algebraically, I'm just going to subtract 3 from all parts of this inequality, which I'm allowed to do. And so now we, we get minus 1 is less than x minus 3 is less than 1. And now I can write this as an absolute value. So this is the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 1. And in the previous version of this video, I went into maybe three or four minutes explaining why, why this is equal to this. And I don't think I need to do that. I think you, you understand that. And if you don't, just try plugging in some values and, and see if, if you get you know, equal results for this and this. In other words, if you plugged in, we could just do one example. If you plug in 5, well, we know 5 is outside the interval, so obviously 5 minus 3, well, that's 2. That's not less than 1. 2 is not less than 1, so 5 doesn't work. Same thing here. If you pl just plugged in 5, you'd get 2. Well, that's not less than 1. So uh, you just, just try values if, if you don't believe me. You, you should have learned somewhere along the line that these two things are equivalent. Anyways, so that means that we have a really nice way to kind of wrap up this statement that we want x to be within one unit of, of 3. So what we, what we said was we have the, uh, the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 1. And that means that x is within one unit of 3, right? Because that's, that's originally what we what we had stated. That's how we how we got. That's how we arrived to the, at this conclusion. We wanted x to be in here, so we forced it to be in there, and then all we did was rewrite things until it looked like this. So this statement really just forces x to be in this interval, 
and and you can read it as saying x is within one unit of of three. Okay, so we can do the same thing for f of x. If we wanted, let's say this was seven and this was five. Well, then if we wanted to to write an interval, so if or sorry, if we wanted f of, to force f of x to be in that interval, well then we can write f of x minus six, the absolute value, sorry, is less than one. So this says f of x is within one unit of six. And if you want, you can start by doing the notation where you have, you know, five is less than f of x is less than seven. And if you start there, see if you can, if you can do the, the necessary algebra just to get it to here. Okay, so anyways, so the, the whole point of this video was to get you comfortable in seeing these, both these absolute values and realizing that all you're saying is that, you know, here f of x is within one unit of six, here x is within one unit of three. Okay, so next we'll look at the delta, uh, the actual definition, the epsilon delta definition of a limit, and this notation will become uh, important for that. See you then.